On today's episode, I'm gonna share my reaction to Webflow's no-code conference, what I'm excited about, and also what I'm a little bit disappointed about. Let's rock and roll. Hey friends, what is up? My name is Ron Segal and welcome to Flux. I've been talking about Webflow forever, probably since they're coming out in beta and I love Webflow. They've been uh, sponsors of this channel for a few years and I actually I actually know the founders and I love them. So this, looking at this recent conference, for me, it's a very personal thing, but also excited as a user, as an educator who's teaching Webflow. I am very excited about this. Actually, two years ago in the uh, 2019's No Code Conference, first No Code Conference, I was there speaking. It was really great to meet all the people in the community. And looking at this year's No Code Conference was, first of all, it felt really apple in terms of the production. I mean, when you have to do uh, an online conference, it's very, very difficult and challenges. And I think, first of all, in terms of production level, it was really high end. It was really comparable. I think Apple was definitely uh, an inspiration. And it looked on par with that. So first of all, congrats to the Webflow team and the whole production team that set up this whole conference. It felt amazing and so like, top notch, so congrats on that. That has been amazing and fantastic presentation of everybody, Vlad, the whole team, you've done amazing, amazing work. Now, here's the thing that like, first of all, talking about the No Code Conference, like I think Webflow did something very, very clever by trying to own the No Code space. Obviously, Webflow did not invent No Code, right? You can even say Wix is No Code and they were here before, but I think Webflow tried to take ownership and name this space and, and, and create a space. And I think that is very, very smart on a marketing level from them and then kind of creating a conference that is supposedly not all about Webflow, but actually a more uh, a conference of the whole category of No Code. So I think, in essence, it was very, very smart, but actually this is a Webflow conference and everybody's coming up to this event knows that this is a Webflow, you know, enthusiastic community looking forward to hearing about the latest releases of features from Webflow. So this is actually kind of like the Apple's developer conference, right? This, it, it looks the same and it feels the same. So I think it's kind of confusing because if this is the Webflow developers conference where you announce new feature, I think this is great and fantastic and let's state it. But if this is presented as like the no code Code conference for the whole category and you're coming there not because of Webflow but because you're you know excited about no code in general then it's a little bit I think either misleading or disappointing where you have to sit there and listen to all of the Webflow 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 thing so like my general feeling about this is it would be just better if this is called the Webflow Developers Conference where we can talk and come here and say, hey, we're excited about Webflow and we wanna talk about Webflow and we wanna hear about Webflow and Webflow, 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 because this is what we're excited about. And no code, yeah, we're excited about the whole space and we can talk about what happens there. But this, I think we need a more general kind of like a no code space that is not owned by Webflow to talk about everything else. And then we need a space to talk about Webflow. Um, so what am I excited about? There were a lot, a lot of uh, releases and, and talking about new features. Before I actually talk about this, I wanna talk about something that I have noticed in the past two years since the last No Code Conference to this one is actually really the, we can call it the birth of the No Code Developer role, which was something that, you know, definitely not when I started using Webflow, but even two years ago, it was very, very rare that people would hire, you would actually see a position for Webflow developer or a no code developer. But now because of the industry, Webflow specifically, but all of the industry of the no code and all of the automation became very, very complex. People have became kind of like specialists in this. And, you know, I was always promoting designers to learn how to use Webflow so they can become full stack, they can design and develop. But as the tools become more and more complex, and I'm seeing this with the students in Flux Academy, some designers, they're getting into Webflow and then they're saying, okay, this is actually pretty complex. I would rather delegate this into a visual developer who's just going to do the Webflow and automation and sync with other, you know, no code tools and I'll do the design and then I can, you know, manage this. So I feel like there's a birth of a new role and I think this is something uh, 
true and that we need to pay attention to this because this is a great opportunity for a lot of people who, whether they are designers or developers or just getting into tech and they're thinking about what should I become, um, I think there's a lot of opportunity in the no-code space of becoming kind of like a visual developer. And there's actually a lot of uh, people helping people to become visual developers. And I think that is that is fantastic. All right, in terms of Webflow announcements. Well, the first ones were kind of like, I guess, small, tiny um, announcements to the, to the designers, uh, blend modes and uh, backdrop filters. I gotta say, in essence, they are tiny, but they are almost the most popular kind of like CSS properties that so far we didn't have access to and that we used to add these kind of like one lines of code when we wanted uh, to get these effects. So it was kind of like annoying. Now we're gonna have access to that. So that's fun. And that's obviously going to enable way more creativity and a lot more kind of like wow and effects on web design. So that's pretty, pretty cool. The other thing was membership. And membership is huge because membership and you know, as somebody who's taught thousands of people Webflow, this is the number one request that people ask, okay, I need to create a membership site. What do I do? And so far, you know, we've been recommending, there's actually a lot of uh, membership, third-party membership tools that we were recommending. That they're doing actually pretty good work from MemberStack to Outseta. There, there's actually a lot of them. Um, and you had to integrate them, you had to pay for you know, a different service and that it always was a little bit difficult. So now that it's native within Webflow, first of all, it seems obvious and it's great. Um, and I'm happy about this. However, there's also one thing that I've noticed you know, since e-commerce came out in Webflow and that is that these features um, like e-commerce, like, like membership, and we'll talk in a second about logic as well. These are eventually uh, very complex features. And when you're trying to do everything, um, you're not going to get into the depth of people who are doing this for a living. And specifically, I'm talking about e-commerce for a second. Webflow came out with e-commerce um, you know, a year or two ago, and it's great that they have it, but when somebody is coming at the moment at least, and trying to compare Webflow with Shopify, Shopify, because the only thing that they're doing is e-commerce, CMS, they are so much more robust. And because Webflow are doing many other things, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to uh, compete with Shopify. So yes, they are more broad, right? And so now they are trying to get into membership and they're also trying with Logic, which is they announced, which is basically kind of like what we have today for Zapier, right? Today, we're using tools like Zapier to create these kind of like logics of, hey, if this form is submitted, then connect it to this service and this service, and we're, we have to use this other tool, uh, Zapier, and now Webflow is announcing logic to bring that in-house. However, you have to think about this. Zapier is already a tool out there that integrates with thousands and thousands of other software that you can very quickly create very robust logics right now. So I would have to think, you know, now do I have to use Webflow's logic, which is currently pretty limited, or do I use Zapier, which is way more robust and works with all the tools that, the other tools that I'm working with. And so the, this is where I'm thinking, okay, Webflow is actually open up, opening up multiple fronts, e-commerce, members, uh, logic, all of these things. And in one sense, it's awesome because you want it to have natively in-house, um, you know, and, and, and works with one tool. It sounds great in theory, but then at the end of the day, you're going to, in the way that I feel right now, you might be left with a lot of tools who are basic instead of having the robust solution for what you need right now. Now, I'm not doing this to, to bash Webflow. I love Webflow and I love where they're going with this. I think this is the best platform out there for visual design. But what I would love to do and what I, what, what I would love to see is them focusing on what they do best, which is visual development, like the UI, building the UI, and then opening up the platform to third-party developers so that we can have native integration with tools like Shopify, with members, uh, with, you know, with Zapier, with, and with anything else that, you know, companies like Finsuit or there's a lot of other developers that wanna build in either plugins or integration with other tools. Because at the end of the day, 
Webflow is one company. They can't build everything on their own. And I was really hoping to hear about them opening up for third party uh, development, kind of like maybe an app store, right? I think the future of Webflow, and again, I'm so excited about Webflow and the future of Webflow, but I think that Webflow, if they're gonna win, if they're gonna be the biggest, they have to focus on their core strengths and opening up and become a platform actually. So I think they can be the best at designing UI. Nobody does that better than them at the moment, right? So I think they have a huge advantage. And now I would love to see them opening it up for a platform. I, I didn't get this. And at the moment, I think they're trying to win on a lot of different categories. So I don't know where this is going. I'm happy to see all of these things, which are, again, very, very super uh, popular requests like membership. But again, when it comes to logic, right now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, really, am I going to use Webflow to send emails? No, I'm going to use my own, I have an email marketing uh, platform, which has, you know, data for open rates and who's getting what and all of my uh, email list, my huge email list is being tagged and segmented. And so there, Webflow is not going to become my email marketing tool, right? So I'm, I'm going to need to keep that tool. So I really think that this is a point for Webflow where they have to decide what they're good at and what they're going to focus on. Um, and this is a very, very tough product strategy decision. Um, and I'm excited to see the future. Let me know in the comments below, what's your opinion? What do you think about these new announcements and about the future of Webflow? I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.